Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have the privilege here of introducing this session on uh, color management with inks, uh, chemistry, and coatings. Uh, we have uh, Kiran Prayagi ji here from Gate. Uh, he's an authority, well-known authority on color, and he's also called the color guru. This is going to be an interesting session, and it's such a vast topic that there's a series of uh, three, four more sessions planned. Uh, please uh, welcome. Please join me in welcoming uh, Kiran Prayagi ji. And a big thank you to uh, BMPA, to SIES, and to Print Week for uh, for this initiative. And uh, sir, I just wanted to give you this uh, memento before we start off. So good afternoon. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. So we had two earlier sessions, and uh, in printing, we have to understand one thing: everything ultimately affects the color. So color management, as it is known in the industry and by many suppliers and other people, they look at a very very narrow region of the color. They look at the color instrument, setting up on the monitor, and calculating and making some profile. But there is much more to color management than just that. Yeah. Unfortunately, this there is a lot of uh, many of these factors are not really understood, and that's why we are still fighting for the color reproduction the way we were fighting 50 years before. The same things, you know, uh, create misunderstanding between supplier, customer, and everybody. Color management. We have to take in the anything you put on the paper, basically it is a color. See what is color? We talked in the earlier session, it's a relation between, between the light and reflection or transmission of light from a printed surface or any or anything you see around. So when light comes in, every printed piece we look at it with the reflector or transmitted light. So the light enters in our eye and it creates the impression. So even if the single color printing, you can also say it needs a color management. Color management is not just CMYK and you make some profile. It's, it has a much more uh, context when it comes to putting ink, even the coating. Yeah? So let's look at the how inks and other chemicals what we use in the, pre -pre in the printing department, how it affects the color. Okay? So we'll, we are going to talk about the inks, printing inks. When we get the, I think it's difficult this because I have a habit of moving around. Uh, we, when we reproduce something, we get various types of originals. We get artist drawing, we get photographs. Photograph can be digital or it can be hard copy or even the simple black and white matter which we have to deposit on the paper, black ink on the paper, it also needs some kind of discipline, some kind of standardization, some kind of you know systematic approach. So whatever we get from various sources, in printing we use four inks sometimes just two, sometimes just single ink, sometimes more than four color and we try to create all that impression within those given inks. So this is what we had seen last time earlier that there are various aspects of color what we see in the nature and what we can reproduce there is a big gap, big lacuna so we need to apply what we call as a color management and the color management I am talking in a much wider sense not just creating profile and applying. So, when it comes to the inks, the basic color is coming from the ink. Even if you take black ink, it is going to produce impression of black in your eye because the light is absorbed by the black, reflected by the white paper, so that contrast gives us the impression. Okay? So, light ultimately is related to the color. Then there are different kinds of inks for different printing processes. We have paste inks, we have liquid inks, we have solid inks and we have powder inks, powdered inks, people may call it toner. Okay. 
So the pastings we are using in lithoopsit in flexography when it comes to UV printing. Okay, UV inks are normally pastings. Letterpress, don't think the letterpress is dead. Unfortunately, that's a wrong impression that is created all over the industry. Letterpress exists in its modern form today. SL Propact, all the most of their collapsible tubes are printed by letterpress. So you have to look at the development in letterpress and not think about the old metal type. Okay, so letterpress is still very much in existence. In fact, SL they produces one third of the world's collapsible tubes. Yeah, they have plants in different countries. Grevier, Grevier, there are only one or two machines which uses UV ink to deposit. That's why I have also listed Grevier under pastings. Intaglio, Intaglio is a process which is like Grevier, but it's a process without individual cells. It just uh, image at a lower level and this is widely used for currency note printing and uh, some special applications or even the uh, there are some special applications when it comes to other type of security printing screen printing and pad printing pad printing is which uses the intaglio plate and you know it's a process where polyurethane ball picks up the ink from the plate and deposits okay so these are pastings under liquid ink we have flexography it uses liquid uh, uses solvent based or water based inks we have gravier solvent or water based inks we have inkjet in inkjet there are different types of inkjet processes that's why it's also mentioned under solid there is a solid inkjet there is a liquid inkjet which is a continuous uh, stream of ink that comes out electrograph electrophotography in electrophotography if you think of hp indigo they use a liquid toner so that's why it's again under liquid and also it's under powder toner because many electrographic machines coming from other companies they use a powder toner okay and inkjet is also solid yeah it goes from solid di directly to in the through a vapor stage and deposits it on the paper so the flow properties required by for by a particular ink it decides how much ink you are going to deposit on the paper so means again ultimately the it results in the visual impression so that color so what are the components each of these components matter to give you the right shade of color on the substrate okay so there are components one com one of the components is called colorant which gives color to the ink or to the toner there are two types of colorants one is dyes and the second one is pigment dyes are completely soluble in the liquid in the solvent okay like if you see the photographic print photographic print they use dyes it's completely soluble in the given liquid and the pigment is not completely soluble it is always in the fine it has fine particles it's never completely soluble so that's a difference between dyes and pigments dyes give you much wider gamut as compared to the pigments pigments color gamut covered by the pigment is less than the dyes but the life expected from the pigment is much longer as compared to the dyes dyes are fugitive that means they fade soon as compared to the pigments so these colorants need some kind of vehicle to carry to the substrate okay so there are resins so there are natural resins there are artificial resins synthetic resins like acrylics and so on okay so the ratio of this vehicle and the colorant that is mixed it decides what kind of color strength you are going to get when you print okay it's easy to ask supplier to supply cheap inks and then supplier will reduce the colorant component of the ink and make it cheaper but then you lose the color strength the color strength goes down 
okay so that's uh, so the color management starts right from here what proportion are you com are you you have the, the composition between colorant and the vehicle then we add some additives which also has certain effect on the color because every chemical that you have has certain color it gives to the ink or it gives to the toner so there are different additives which are required in the ink and there are old days if you look at this ink can you always had the some skin formation on the ink so you have to remove the skin otherwise you get hickeys when you print and then you have to take out the ink and print today most of the ink manufacturers they are using this special additives which prevent the skin formation in the ink ink can and you your hickey problem goes down okay then there are other information coalescing agents that is coalescing that's putting all other ingredients together yeah coalescing agents then there are wetting agents because the surface tension has to be right to deposit ink on the paper if the surface tension is very high your substrate will not accept the ink easily okay ink will stick to it, all ingre in, ingredients within the ink it will have cohesive forces it will not have adhesive forces so it will not go on the substrate easily then the transfer is not easy so again it affects your color yeah then you have biocides and then you have secretives and so on so all these additives has certain property because each chemical has certain color okay then you have the carrier which work as a diluent which work as a carrier again and then you have solvent for the liquid inks gravier flexo you have carrier liquid for the toner okay if you are using hp indigo there is a carrier liquid okay and so there are other ingredients which are added so that your ink becomes easily printable product onto the substrate where you want to print so each process each substrate will need different composition and as a printer ink manufacturers check but as a printer you should also check batch to batch whether your ink is carrying the same color or not and whether it has other properties which are required to deposit ink on paper whether those properties are there or not if the surface tension is too high your transfer will be less so your color on the paper will be less and if it happens between the two different colors if you are putting them together then your color is going to shift okay so each component has certain task to carry out okay so the colorant gives color and also controls the intensity of light if proportion of colorant is more the light absorb of some see the colorant gives us a light because it absorbs certain part of the spectrum and gives out certain part of the spectrum so if that colorant proportion changes the light absorption of unwanted wavelength is going to change and it's going to affect your color okay so color intensity will affect vehicle okay anchoring of colorant on the substrate ink drying how is your ink drying if it doesn't dry then your ink will come off it will rub off so to that extent your ink on the substrate is reduced colorant into printable form okay dissolve so if have, has anybody visited ink manufacturing any fang manufacturing you have visited anybody else yeah if you see this ink manufacturing i mean it's from certain acids and certain uh reaction it gets certain color for example if you go to hubering plant and when they make certain magenta color the mixture has to have below 5 degrees 5 degrees centigrade then it takes that particular magenta color 
if it's six or seven your magenta ink changes okay so that that's also a big science ink technology is again a big science then additives additives influence ink behavior okay ink drying ink flow ink gloss abrasion resistance and so on then carrier okay transport of colorant so dyes which are colorants dyes these are molecules surrounded by solvent which is a base liquid okay so in flexo and gravier sometimes we use dye basings okay in textile they use dye basings in offset printing we have pigment basings okay so every molecule absorb photo light has a photon take your color mic is there okay in the meantime i'll continue with this okay i mean once it comes here we can enter for 5 minutes eh? okay yeah there is one more anybody wants to ask some question you ask me in the slide is in the front it's always better that way yeah don't keep it at the end so that when the when we are on the particular topic it's easier okay so light has a photon photon which oscillates okay creates a wavelength and gives you a particular color of light so every molecule absorb photon so certain portion of the light will be given out certain will be absorbed then higher the color intensity the more luminous the color that is more that is brighter the color okay dyes as i said has a larger color gamut compared to pigments because in pigment there is a lot of light scattering because of the particle size in dyes there is no light scatter yeah so dyes are transparent molecules significantly smaller than the visible wavelength 380 nano see visible wavelength range we have seen earlier human region is human uh, range is 380 nanometer to 830 nanometer okay but generally we take as 400 to 700 because below that and above for 700 the color is more or less similar so if the molecule size is smaller than the wavelength which is 380 nanometer the transparency will go up because there is a less light scattering extremely narrow absorption band that's why the dyes appear much stronger in color much brighter in color compared to the pigment okay vehicle is not necessary because it's a liquid dye inferior light fastness as i said earlier the light fastness of the dyes is not so good i mean it's good for certain purposes but pigment definitely has a higher life is oxidized due to bleaching dyes get oxidized okay you must have seen in textile also in textile the clothes when you wear the clothes after some time the area which is exposed more to the light it gets faded very soon okay so these are fugit dyes are fugitive okay and then we can deposit on the paper now pigment color so those were dyes color and now we have pigment color and what we use in the printing ink in offset and many other things. okay they are cross link molecules okay cross link i think is it coming yeah okay but then we can take some questions that time that is okay let him get it is better that way okay so the pigment particles it can be 0.1 to 2 micron and this has several molecules when it is that small and in printing 
or when the ink is manufacturing these particles they create agglomerations you know they, they come together that's why if you go to the ink factory you find that they have this uh, triple roll mill through which the ink passes two times or three times and it breaks down this agglomeration into smaller particles but still these are particles they are not dyes like completely soluble okay now when the light strikes the pigment which may be deposited or which may be in the ink can it's only 10% of the molecules on the surface that react okay and maybe few below so that is why and so there will be a lot of light scattering so therefore it has a wide absorption band as compared to the dyes and it's not as pure pure as dyes the intensity or the brightness is not as good as dyes pigment disperses light as such they are opaque see these are particles so when the light strikes the light scatters like light scatters in the paper because of the fibers same way the light scatters because of the particles so the pigments has higher opacity than the dyes okay it requires vehicle to deposit on the substrate that's easy enough superior light fastness which i already said okay less less bleeding on the uh this point sometimes it's okay sometimes i'm i don't agree because i know certain magenta ink certain they you know they bleed very easily so it depends on the type of ink later on i'll show you another series so you will be amazed that how many different types of pigments are there yeah and the dyes okay and the pigment that is pigment portion that is in the ink may be 5 to 30 percent depending on the color what color you want and so on so now printing pigments okay there are two kinds of pigments i'm just giving this all this all this background because everything is going to affect your visual impression when you deposit ink on paper black ink or color ink it makes no difference so the printing pigment there are two types of pigments organic pigment and inorganic pigment okay so organic pigment processing colors most important in printing okay two groups chromatic pigments and black pigments so chromat chroma is color so there are color pigments and black pigment i got a whole list of pigments which i'll show you later inorganic pigments inorganic pigments white titanium dioxide okay or white color or metallic gold silver bronze pearlescent pigment fluorescent pigments okay so this inorganic pigment they normally have a higher particle size compared to the organic pigments that's why when you if you are printing white very often you find that your ink rollers they get uh bad very soon yeah they get damaged very soon compared to inorganic pigments resins dissolved in mineral oil you know if you go to the ink factory you find that pigments are dispersed in resin and this resin is is coming from natural trees rosin which is which they boil and then it becomes resin and that is mixed with the uh, pigment okay then you get your pastings pigments finely dispersed in the binder pigment pigment particles enclosed by binder shell so old days we used to get the ink now now i am talking about the pasting we used to get the ink where the binder was coated on to the few agglomerates of the uh, pigment particles then 
at the same time there was something introduced called as the flush pigment which every particle was coated with a binder which gives you better ink strength okay so nowadays many people are following the that practice so pigment particles enclosed by the binder shell shell protects finely dispersed particle from agglomerates so your particle doesn't come again together and they are nicely separated so you can work your ink much better way binders dry or harden on the substrate to bind the pigment okay so when that binder hardens your pigment is bound to the substrate then additives the type of additives depending on printing process okay and it influences gloss how your ink dries what is the flow behavior yeah you need different flow behavior for different printing processes okay on the speed of the machine on the how the ink is transferred abrasion resistance the discuff resistance okay so that that all come from the additives carrier carrier that's good carrier substance for colorants in conventional printing process are thinning agents such as mineral oils ipa toluene water that is the solvents which are used in the inks see we have oil based inks we have water based inks we have uh, uv inks so these are all different inks which need different carrier ink transfer so depending on the process the ink transfer process changes ink splitting in litho offset uv flexo letter press uv gravure pad printing the ink is transferred from one roller to another roller or to the substrate by splitting the ink ink is split into two and half the portion is transferred direct ink transfer in hot embossing or thermal transfer okay there are thermal transfer where the ribbon gives impression the direct ink transfer ink through the opening that is in screen printing and spraying the ink that is in ink jet okay so these are the different principles of ink transfer so in ink transfer how the ink is transferred and whether it's a consistent transfer or not every time that affects again ink deposition and ultimately color ink drying there are different way the ink dries depending on the process depending on the machine you have and so on so is a physical drying which is absorption of the ink evaporation of the ink evaporation of the solvent chemical drying it's oxidation or radiation curing infrared uv electron beam there can be combination drying different methods like if you take say heat set offset printing you have hot air flow and oxidation okay and certain amount of absorption solidify solidification drying that is ink fluid in hot state solid after cooling that is the solid inkjet inkjet solid system okay as soon as deposited it it cools down and become solid ink anchors mechanically to substrate it penetrates into the pores of the paper in paper fibers pressure between ink carrier and the substrate ink penetrates into the substrate by capillary action that is ink jet when the ink spread or even the gravure printing on paper okay It's capillary action in extremely smooth surfaces ink held by polar interaction chemical and physical effects between ink and the substrate okay so these are all various process so you have to understand your process very well what exactly happens how your ink dries to get ultimately consistent result so now litho offset inks these are highly viscous inks and these are paste inks like consistency like toothpaste yeah dynamic viscosity 4200 pascals ink is structured so 
drying components in ink do not harden over the rollers. So, you do not want your ink to harden on the rollers, it must dry on the substrate or in inking unit or plate or blanket. For weight offset, printing certain portion of dampening solution via the contact with the plate and dampening unit. Okay. Waterless offset, we have very few waterless offset machine. And there is, uh, there are only, I know only two or three. Okay. Waterless offsetting contains silicon oil to ensure non-printed areas do not get ink. If you look at the waterless offset plates, it has a silicon coating on the non-image area, so it doesn't take ink. So, we do not need the damping solution there, but the inks are special like this. Extremely thin ink films transferred onto the substrate, okay. Newspaper web printing medium viscosity drying slowly physically through absorption. So, all each process has its own speciality for ink drying, for ink transfer. So, litho offset ink's ingredients now. Varnish, which is a binding agent, which is a hard resin 20 to 50 percent with high proportion of colophon, alkyd resins, vegetable oils, linseed oil, soybean oil, and you know, etcetera, etcetera. We do not have ink session, so we will not talk more about detail, but I am just, just to understand color, which largely depending on the inks you are using, I am just giving you a background. Color pigment depends 10 to 30 percent, then additives up to 10 percent, dryers, waxes, agents, silicon oils, newsprint black, principal component cheap carbon black. So, sometimes some newspaper they use expensive three color inks and a cheap black ink because the black consumption is more. Requirements high transparency for suitable mixing in our printing. Inks superimpose on one another, ok. So, some transparency is required. Printability, brilliance, gloss. So, your color what you see also lot depends on the gloss, structure of the paper, structure of the ink and the any further operations like coating, lamination and so on. Renewability, flow properties, drying, emulsification, water in ink, oil behavior, ink acceptance by substrate, so on. Flexography inks. Flexography we use liquid inks, yeah, liquid like water, okay. except uh, UV flexo. They are paste inks. So viscosity range 0.5 pascals. Ink transferred to flexible printing plate. Now most flexo plates are highly flexible. Some people are still using rubber plates, but many are using now photopolymer plates, which are highly flexible, and the ink deposited on the plate is via analog roll. Analog roll has minute depression which carries the ink and deposits onto the plate. Okay. And there are different inking system, there is a two roller system, three roller system, there is a chamber doctor blade. So, the ink that you use, for example, if you are using chamber doctor blade, you have the ink which runs through the main tank and through the chamber. So, there is a continuous ink flow and some machines or many machines when there is a continuous ink flow you can control the temperature of the ink. You control the temperature you are controlling viscosity of the ink. You are controlling viscosity of the ink, you are controlling color that you print okay? so, and so on. In the simple flexo system like two roller, three roller, it is not easy to control the viscosity. Solvent is evaporated after transport to the substrate through heat application, the heat dryers, ink layer up to 1 micron. So, this ink that you deposit in flexo, if your analogs roller gets choked up over a long run, it takes less amount of ink and you get color variation because the ink deposited on the substrate goes down. Flexography ing ingredients, pigments or 
in summing we also use dyes. Solvent type, critical role. Solvent use are ethyl acetate, alcohol. Water based sinks also need certain amount of alcohol. I mean small percentage of alcohol. Otherwise it does not work properly. Also you need a longer drying system if you are using water based sinks. UV inks that is pastings for label printing. Ink requirements. Setting of ink viscosity very important for printing quality because if you are using liquid inks, the viscosity will change continuously especially in solvent based inks and if there is no temperature control then it is a disaster. No squeezing away of ink on edges of the raised image. Okay. Now with the you know the flexography typical we have been talking about the characteristic you get a dark outline. Yeah. With new type of flexo plates, it is very difficult to make out whether it is a flexo or not. There is because the plate edge, uh, image edges are made in such a way it does not give dark outline ok and there are uh, some very good plates yeah. on analog roller that is going to give you a lot of color variation. Solvent evaporated after transport to the substrate through heat application, intermediate drying in color printing. So, there are two systems in Flexo and Devier. To have partial drying with the dryer on the individual unit, and then you have final dryer to completely dry your ink. Okay. Letter pressings, viscosity goes very high to 150 pascals on paper, paperboard dry physically through absorption, litter by chemically by oxidation. On non absorbent transparent metallic papers drying slowly through oxidation using oil based things. Something like heat set. One minute. Letter by sink ingredients, ok. Similarly, like offset, inorganic pigments, varnishes, ink requirements, high transparency, because when inks over, overlap each other, we need to get the combination color, brilliance, gloss, instability, runnability, flow properties, drying, file behavior, abrasion resistance, sink acceptably similar like other process, but each ink has different ingredient. Gravier inks, shortest inking system, yeah you have the image carrying cylinder directly revolving in the ink trough, so shortest path. Use liquid ink and the fill image forming, it is like analog roll in Plexo. In gravier it is a similar thing, but you have the depth at different levels because you have to create the image not for ink transfer. Okay. So, here you have the similar problem about the if ink dries in the sails, you will get variation. If your impression cylinder does not have the right shore hardness, it does not give the right impression. If your substrate wrap is not right under the impression cylinder, then also you will not get the right transfer of ink from the cylinder. So, gravier ink ingredients, simple composition, very low viscosity. So, we have two parts here. In India, the publication gravier is done only by Hindustan Times now, they are weekly supplement. Okay. Other the rest are all package, packaging gravier. But in Europe, there are still many companies who do publications by Gravier. So, Toluene, Xylene, Petroleum Spirits basically for package publication Gravier and Ethanol, Ethyl Acetate, Water, Organic Solvent for the packaging Gravier. Because in packaging we have wide variety of substrate. Publication Gravier there is only paper. Okay. Packaging Gravier you have various substrates which needs different 
components in the ink okay because it should not react with the product product the it should be safe for children to handle it should be safe for old people to handle okay should not affect the food that you eat and so on the gravier ink requirements range of ink is very large okay coating thickness greater than 2 microns special metallic pigments we use many times even here we have people who are printing the certain cosmetic boxes by offset thereafter they deposit the metallic ink on the sheet fed gravier and people like parson or other people they have sheet fed gravier okay factors most important selecting solvent what is the boiling point what is the evaporation rate what is the flash point explosion limit odor it's very important when it comes to packaging work safety and ecological compatibility then screen printing second so back to pastings in screen we are using all pastings most varied substrate paper card plastic glass metal textile everything you can print by screen printing very varied physical properties chemical physical properties so very because the substrate range is very wide you need very wide variety of inks okay so four production areas commercial printing with different advertising media sales screen printing that is serigraphy that is i don't know if you heard of a novel studio marvel studio it's in amdavad and they produce one of the finest screen printing by serigraphy it's a manual method in fact they have been getting the jury's award at the all india printing competition then industrial printing like bottles tubes cups special processes textile circuit boards car dashboard okay that is from screen printing 